In Ruth 1.16, God's word reads, but Ruth replied, her mother-in-law was telling her, you need to go back, you need to go back with your sister-in-law to the land, or if I'm going to my home, you need to go on. And Ruth kept telling her no. It said, but Ruth replied, don't ask me to leave you and turn back. Wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you live, I will will live. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. Wherever you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. May the Lord punish me severely if I allow anything but death to separate us. Now isn't that some bold statements. Matter of fact, I'm going to go back to them in just a second if I can. There we go. I want you now to think about this, not only as you and your spouse, but I want you to think about these verses as you personally saying it to God. So I'll read it, but I want you in your mind say, God, I will not. I, okay? But Ruth replied, don't ask me to leave you and turn back. I believe all of us need to ask God, Father, help me to never leave you Amen. and never turn away from you. He goes, she goes on to say, wherever you go, I will go. Think about that. Wherever God takes you, you'll go. Wherever you live, I will live. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. Oh, God, you're my God. Amen. As we go on, wherever you die, I will die. Of course, we know Jesus died on the cross for us. And when we go from this old side of the, this earth to go into heaven, we'll spend eternity with him when we know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. So if we don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we're going to spend eternity in hell. And then said this, after she said, I'll be buried wherever you are buried, said, may the Lord punish me severely if I allow anything but death to separate us. Well, I'm going to tell you, I believe we ought to say things like that to God. God. And God's going to punish us anyway. But we need to ask him, punish me severely, Lord, if I start walking away from you because I want to come back to you. Now, I think these are great to be said about a spouse. Don't get me wrong. But I think it's even greater to be said to our Lord and Savior from our hearts. God, help me to never fail you. Help me to never walk away from you. Help me to never leave you. Help me to be wherever you are, no matter when it is and no matter where it is. If we would just get that out of this today, we'd be okay. We're going to go a little farther here and get into the rest of it, but I'm going to give some background to this. And the three chapters before the fourth chapter where we're going to start reading, we find out that Naomi's husband and her two boys and her moved basically because of drought and other things, and they moved to another land. And when they got there, their boys got married, and Ruth was one of the wives of one of their boys. Later on, Naomi's husband died, and the boys died. So that's the reason there was these three ladies the mother-in-law, and the two daughter-in-laws. Now, that's kind of unusual when you find daughter-in-laws following close to mother-in-laws. That's the reason we have mother-in-law appointments, so they don't have to live right with us. No. I, that's the reason we have things like that, but also we find people talk. Because there's never been a woman that's been good enough to marry a mother's son. Have you ever noticed that? I don't care how good they are, there's always something missing. I don't care how much they do, there's always something they haven't done. I don't care about everything else that goes on, there's always something. Because mama's little baby is worthy of the best woman on the face of this earth. That's just how mothers see it. I don't know why that is. I think birth does something to a mother that has a boy. There's something that happens there, and they think that boy, you know, he deserves better. 
He deserves this or that. And we don't find any of this kind of talk in the book of Ruth. What we find is that Ruth loved her daughter-in-laws. And they loved her. Especially Ruth. Naomi loved her daughter-in-law. Excuse me. I'm going to go to a passage here and we'll talk about some of the others as we start. In Ruth 4.1 it says Boaz went to the town. Now who was Boaz? Boaz was actually a family member that was quite wealthy and owned a lot of land. And so in owning that a lot of land he was also one of the redeemers of the family. There was another one that was a little closer than him. What was the redeemer of the family? Well, very simply put, it's just like the redeemer, Jesus Christ, is our redeemer. He pays the price. It's somebody that will take over the debt of somebody else in the family, but also is in the lineage of the family and therefore can take care of the land or anything else that needs to be done. Debt, land, other things. Family redeemers were very common in this day. And Boaz was one of those. But also something that happened right before this verse is that Boaz, as he owned farms and they were picking grain, Ruth said to Naomi that she was going to go out in a field and just pick grain behind the workers and just pick whatever they missed or whatever they, they didn't get. And so that they would, they would pick this, she would pick this grain. Well, Boaz recognized, didn't recognize her. He recognized her as a good-looking young woman. And he asked one of his workers, who's that lady over there that's picking uh, right behind all the rest? So he actually called her over and talked to her and found out and by name who she was. And of course he knew her family was kin to him. And basically told her that you don't have to. You can go get right in the middle of them and pick on them. The men here won't harass you. She was picking with the ladies anyway. Pick whatever you want. Even ask her to come over and eat that day during lunch. And then we find that it, as it gets later and in it, she's actually able to pick right in the midst of them. She was bringing more. He was giving her more grain to bring home. And, and matter of fact, her mother-in-law couldn't believe it. Naomi couldn't believe how much she was bringing home. And who let you do this? And she said, stay with Boaz. She even told him some things there I kind of wonder about in the passages here. But what ends up happening is we're going to end up at these verses so you get a little background here of what's happening. And it says, Boaz went to the town gate and took a seat there. Just then, the family redeemer he had mentioned came by. So Boaz called out to him, come over here and sit down, friend. I want to talk to you. So they sat down together. In verse 2 it says, Then Boaz called ten leaders from the town and asked them to sit as witnesses. And Boaz said to the family redeemer, You know Naomi, who came back from Moab. She is selling the land that belonged to her relative, Elimelech. That's as her husband had died. I thought I should speak to you about it so that you can redeem it if you wish. If you want the land, then buy it here in the presence of these witnesses. But if you don't want it, let me know right away because I am the next in line to redeem it after you. And the man replied, all right, I'll redeem it. Now, here's the rest of the story. Then Boaz told him, Of course, your purchase of the land from Naomi also requires that you marry Ruth. So that the Moab woman or widow, that way she will have children who may carry on with her husband's name and keep the land land in the family then I cannot redeem it the family redeemer replied because this might endanger my own estate you redeem the land I cannot do it well I'm pretty sure this is kind of what he had in mind anyway but he had to make it legal 
And so that day, when you had people standing on the, on the corner like that, and you made a deal, it would be set in stone, so to speak. In verse 7 it says, Now in those days it was the custom in Israel for anyone transferring a right of purchase to remove his sandal and hand it to the other party. This publicly validated the transaction. Kind of a weird transaction, isn't it? I don't know about you, but I don't necessarily want a guy's stinky sandal. You know, I don't necessarily want to hold that thing. I think it's funny in God's Word they never tell you what they do with it afterwards if they keep it. And now they got one weird sandal looking like the other. Maybe that's where some of these styles started today. I don't know. But anyway, they would take off a sandal and hand it to the other person. That deal would make it. Now, something else had happened in that day. So the other family redeemer drew off his sandal as he said to Boaz, You buy the land. Then Boaz said to the elders and to the crowd standing around, You are witnesses that today I have bought from Naomi all the property of Elimelech, Kilion, and Malon. And with the land I have acquired Ruth, the Moabite widow of Mola, to be my wife. Hmm. What do you think of that? How would you like that arranged for you? I mean, let's face it. Some of you might have done better. I don't know. But anyway, no, I'm not going to get into that. But the truth is, how would you like to have been married that way? I want to tell you this. I believe this with all my heart in studying this passage is that Ruth loved her mother so much, mother-in-law, that she would do anything that pleased her. Matter of fact, I believe Ruth had a love for her mom that was much better than you and I have many times for our Lord and Savior. And it's unfortunate it's that way, but it just is. So Naomi, not even being her blood mother, her mother-in-law, Ruth loved to the point that it didn't matter what was going to happen. She would follow whatever custom was because she loved her mother-in-law that much. I'm going to ask you today, do you love God that much that you'll do anything that he would ask you to do? Do you love God that much that you'll follow his word? So many times I find people that know about his word and know things that are in his word, but they don't want to follow it because they'd have to do something different than they're doing because they don't like to follow God's word. It's a little painful on us, isn't it, sometimes? Sin's painful when you get caught. There's no doubt about it. You and I need to love the Lord even more so than Ruth did Naomi. So we go on down in the scripture uh, to be his wife. This way she can have a son to carry out the family name of her dead husband and to inherit the family property here in his hometown. You are all witnesses today. Then the elders and all the people standing in the gate replied, We are witnesses, and may the Lord make this woman, who is coming into your home like Rachel and Leah, from whom all the nations of Israel descended. May you prosper in Ephrathah and be famous in Bethlehem. Now, that's the whole town that are saying, now may you be famous in Bethlehem. And may the Lord give you descendants by the young woman who will be like those of our ancestors, Perez and sons of Tamar and Judah. So Boaz took Ruth into his home and she <clears throat> became his wife. And when he slept with her, the Lord enabled her to become pregnant and she gave birth to a son. And when the women of the town said to Naomi, praise the Lord who has now provided a redeemer for your family. You hear this? God provided her a redeemer for her family. 
just like God has provided you and I a redeemer for our souls and for our family. May the child be famous in Israel. May he restore your youth and care for you in your old age. For he is the son of your daughter-in-law who loves you and has been better to you than seven sons. The whole town recognized this. That's how much that love showed. Let me ask you, the people that live around you recognize how much you love God. I hope and pray they do. Because if they don't, there's something wrong. And he says, as we go on, for he is the son of his daughter-in-law, which I said, who loved you and has been better to you than the seven sons. <clears throat> Excuse me. Naomi took the baby and cuddled him to her breast. And she cared for him as he were her own. And the neighbor, neighborhood women said, now at last Naomi has a son again. And they named him Obed. And he became the father of Jesse. And, Jess, and Jesse, of course, was the grandfather of David. This is a generation, <clears throat> generational record of those ancestors. Perez was the father of Hezron. Hezron was the father of Ram. And Ram was the father of Ammon Nabad, or Dad. Okay. Amadab was the father of Nashan. Nashan was the father of Salmon. Salmon was, Salmon was the father of Boaz. Boaz was the father of Obed. And I think it quit. No, sorry. Obed was the father of Jesse, and Jesse was the father of David. I want to stop right there because that is where it told us before. Now, what bloodline? Did Jesus come from? Abraham. Okay, well, we're talking about David here. Jesse was the father of David, and we're told in God's word that David lineage was going to be where Christ came from. Now, who was in this lineage that we just saw? Ruth. A woman that's mentioned in the God's word that actually ends up being in the lineage of our Savior. She ended up by having an extraordinary God that worked out extraordinary plans for her life. She did that by simply following him with all that she had and all that she was. I believe all of us could use Ruth as an example of how not only to love a spouse, but how to love a savior. Because that baby that was born in that family was the redeemer of her family. That baby that was born many years after that in her lineage became the savior of the world and died on the cross of Mount Calvary that you and I might be saved. How much can we love the Lord? How much do we love the Lord? Well, I believe we ought to be showing it to other people. Matter of fact, in the book of Ruth and one of other places, they even said about her that she had integrity that everyone knew of. Does, that, does everybody know that of us? We might think they do, but they may be thinking other things. They followed, she followed the Lord. She followed and did everything it took. Matter of fact, God's word says better than seven sons could have done or would have done. That's how much she loved her mother-in-law. That's how much she loved her God. I'm just going to ask you today, how much do you love your God? First of all, do you know Jesus Christ as personal Lord and Savior? Second of all, if you know him, are you living for him? Are you giving your all to him? Are you giving him everything that he's asked you for? Have you done everything he's asked you to do? Have you went everywhere he's asked you to go? Well, only you can answer that question because it's between you and God. But God's never not known it. He's known it since the beginning of time. There is nothing in our lives that will ever fool or surprise God. God knows it all. The question of the day, are we willing to give it all to him?